Hey, you wanna go on a date? Let me impress you with my poop! Okay, so that sounded weird, and obviously a human could never get away with something like that. But believe it or not, there are animals that do something very similar to that, and much weirder. Here are the 10 weirdest animal mating rituals. Number 10 is the red-sided garter snake. The red-sided garter snake, native to the United States and Canada, can have some massive breeding sessions during their mating season. Areas of Manitoba, Canada are known to get up to 10,000 of them at any time. The only problem is the female to male ratio can sometimes enter the 1 to 100 range during these uh, snake orgies. No, it's my turn. Give me a second, I'm going at it. This massive snake fest turns into a violent race for first copulation, with hordes of males swarming a single female and forming a large writhing ball of eager snakes around her. And if she isn't powerful enough to escape the crowd, she could become too constricted and die. The males are actually more drawn to a female if she's being engaged by other males, rather than if she was alone, meaning that part of the attraction is the struggle itself. You know how humans want what we can't have, well it's basically the same thing if 100 guys were swarming a female, which would be disturbing. Number 9 is the Bowerbird. Bowerbirds, native to Australia and New Guinea, have an exceptionally labor-intensive mating ritual. To attract females, the male bowerbirds must first build a small hut or monument for the mating area, which commonly consists of two walls formed like a tunnel hole. These bowers are made with tons of little twigs and an acute attention to detail. Don't bother me, I'm building a love nest. Once the bower is complete, the male must decorate his new place with colorful items, often stealing them from other males and position them on the ground in front of it. If he's proven himself to be a talented constructor and decorator, a female will drop in to examine his work. If everything is to her satisfaction, the male will then perform a full dance routine in front of her, complete with movement, posing, dilating pupils, staring, and strange guttural noises. Woo! You ready, babe? I'm dancing for you. Woo, woo, woo. Let's do this thing. Woo. Number eight is the Mandarin fish. Mandarin fish live in the coral reefs of the Pacific Ocean. When mating, the male and female join together and rise above the reef to create a small cloud of eggs and a cloud of sperm to fertilize them. As nature dictates, it's usually the larger and tougher mandarin fish that breed with the females, leaving the smaller fish with no way to further their family line. But some of the smaller fish have figured out how to bypass all the competition with all the other males and hijack a few fertilizations for themselves without ever having to put effort into courting the female. The cloud of egg and sperm that's left floating will sometimes become the victim of a, for lack of a better term, swim by shooting. In other words, the single males swim by and add some of their own sperm to the cloud. Some will wait until a couple is in the process of mating and then ambush them with, uh, you know, a little, whoa, gotta get in there quick. <laughs> Number seven are bonobos. Bonobos are kind of like the free-spirited hippies of the chimpanzee family, man, and are only found in the Democratic Republic of Congo in Africa. Bonobo groups are primarily led by dominant females who also take on the sole responsibility of raising any young that they produce. Though they bear great responsibilities, they also lead fairly happy lives filled with sexual encounters. Bonobos actually approach sex in a casual and non-committal way by using it as a technique to unwind calm down after a fight, and even just say hello. Imagine if humans were like that. Hey, I just want to say hi. Ooh, ooh, ooh. They also engage in sexual acts regularly with multiple partners and even same-sex partners because this type of monkey love knows no bounds and does not discriminate. Bonobos have been observed displaying oddly human-like signs of affection, including cuddling, facing each other while mating, and making out. Imagine two monkeys making out. I wouldn't know if they were kissing or trying to eat each other's face. <laughs> Number six are hippos. 
Hippos are big, adorable members of African wildlife and are commonly known for swimming around and making mud baths. But their bad hygiene gets dialed up to 11 when the ladies come around, and their vile behavior becomes a way of saying, hey, check me out. So you might be wondering, Matt, how does a hippo mark their territory and make themselves an attractive mate? I got to know. Well, obviously by taking an enormous dump while making a helicopter motion with its tail, flinging it everywhere, and peeing while it's happening. I don't think I can ever play Hungry Hungry Hippos again. Hopefully, the horrid smell is enough to draw in a suitable mate that will join the male in the water where they will float and position themselves. Okay, get ready, I just pooped. Doing it in the water allows the male to mount easier, but leaves the female submerged under his weight during the process, which cannot be dangerous if she doesn't take a breath. Again, imagine a human doing all that. You're welcome for the visual. Number five are honeybees. The world's population of honeybees is declining fast, and while the use of pesticides contributes the most towards their demise, um, the fact that their junk explodes and kills them doesn't help much either. When the queen bee is ready to reproduce, she's surrounded by many male drone bees who will attempt to mate with her. And that sounds great, except that when one of the drones succeeds, his endophallus will rip off his body upon climax and stay inside the queen. <sighs> this rip out part of the drone's insides and causes them to die in the most unpleasant way. However, if the now castrated drone somehow manages to survive the horrible ordeal, he's quickly banished from the colony and left to die. And in the most savage way, his drone brothers will also attempt to mate with the queen by scooping out whoever's exploded dong was left behind and replacing it with their own before, um, also dying. This episode is just full of wonderful visuals. Exploded dong? Don't mind if I do! Number four are giraffes. Giraffes, found throughout southern and eastern Africa, have some strange ideas of what is socially acceptable when looking for a mate. When male giraffes are in the mood, they'll follow a female around until they can get a good taste of their urine. In a disgusting act of sexual investigation, they'll drink the female's fresh urine to taste for estrus, which signifies that her body is ready to receive the male. Once the male has taken a sample that he finds to be desirable, he will attempt to woo the female by nudging her with his head, resting on her body, or licking her tail. And he does all that with the pee mouth? Okay, great. Once she gives in and accepts the male, he does the deed and sets off in search of another well-hydrated female to stalk. Man, these giraffes just get busy. A giraffe pregnancy can last between 400 and 460 days, and then the calf is born, destined to grow up and repeat the cycle of weirdness. Number three are Argonauts. Male Argonauts live their lives with very little regard for their own reproductive organs. Argonauts are small octopi that live in tropical areas of the open ocean and are also known as paper nautiluses. The amazing thing about these creatures is that the male will use a special tentacle arm called a hectocotylus to transfer his sperm to the female. Gentlemen, this is only for this creature. Don't ever go out to a woman and be like, you wanna see my hectocotylus? But once the arm is inserted in her, he'll rip it off his own body Body and leave it there to continue delivering his seed. Yes, these octopi essentially insert and detach their own genitalia and just move on like nothing ever happened. Keep in mind this is a little odd given the fact that penises don't grow in endless supply. The males have a fairly short lifespan with only about two weeks, which actually puts the whole sperm throwing and running into perspective a little better. Sorry, but I gotta get that done. I'm gonna die soon. Number two is the flatworm. Turbal area flatworms look like flat, colorful slugs that flop and twist around in the water and participate in some pretty disturbing sword fights. They're hermaphroditic and their mating process starts off as a fight to be the father. The flatworms use their dual penises as a weapon to try to make a deep enough incision to inseminate the other in an act more commonly known as 
penis fencing. Okay, here we go, you're gonna get pregnant. A match can last a whole hour before one of the flatworms loses and wiggles away with a whole set of upcoming children to provide for. The reason for the violent penis gouging is because both worms are capable of producing children and would both prefer to be the one to spread their seed and move on without having to raise their children. Man, this ritual sure does make a traumatic How I Met Your Father story for the kitties. And number one is the anglerfish. You've probably seen the anglerfish before. They're those creepy, deep sea dwelling creatures that use a small glowing lure on their heads to trick their prey. Every single terrifying example that you've likely seen of this fish was female. Male anglerfish are actually very small in comparison and do not look anywhere near as intimidating as a fully grown female. In fact, the males are so useless that their own method of surviving long enough to reproduce is for them to bite and latch onto the female for life. After after their grip is secured, the males release enzymes that will literally fuse their bodies with the females, turning them basically into a sentient tumor and allowing them to feed off the nutrients that the female ingests after a long day of hunting. Literally the male's only purpose is to create sperm so that the female can fertilize her eggs and other than that he just breathes with his gills. Come on male anglerfish, I know you got more in you, do something nice for the fishy community. Don't just be a sentient tumor, it's disturbing. So that was the 10 weirdest animal mating rituals. And if you guys enjoyed this, remember to give it a big thumbs up. Also, be sure to subscribe and turn on notifications by clicking the little bell beside the subscribe button so that you never miss a thing because I release new videos all the time. Thank you guys for watching and I'll see you next time. Anglerfish out. Uh, 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 uh.